Hello, humans navigating the intertubes. This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video we are going to be discussing, now I know we've discussed it already, but variables. And the reason I wanted to make a video dedicated to variables is because there's some more information I needed to give you. That being said, I'll try not to be redundant so this video might be a little bit short. Variables, variables are used to temporarily store some value. So think of them as a box that you can put stuff in, like a number, for example. One thing I wanted to make sure we have clear is the difference between declaring a variable and initializing a variable. Declaring is when you say, hey, this variable exists, such as this. Initializing is when we assign a value to that variable using x equals something. This here is known as the assignment operator. So you can literally think of it as assigning the value 5 to the variable x. That would be the equivalent of putting a value into the box. You can declare and initialize a variable in one step like this. This is the declaration and this is the initialization with the assignment operator. Now you always want to make sure to initialize a variable before you try outputting it or using that variable in some kind of math expression or something like that. If you don't believe that this is important, try outputting an uninitialized variable. So you can see here, we are outputting x and a new line, but if we never initialize this, give this a try and see what happens. You'll quickly find out that uninitialized variables basically just output garbage, and that is not the kind of thing we want showing up in our application. So make sure you always, always, always remember to initialize your variable. If possible, initialize it at the same time as declaring it like we did up here. That way you don't forget to do it. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is naming variables. As programmers, we are given the privilege to name our own variables. I know, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know why anyone would trust us to do something that requires so much responsibility. <laughs> Thankfully, they created certain rules so we don't make some stupid, dumb variable names. The first thing that you need to know are what characters are allowed. <laughs> Onyx. So yeah, anyways, you're allowed to use all letters, numbers, and underscores. These are the allowed characters in our variable names. And these are considered different. That's because variable names are case sensitive. That means tacos, tacos, <laughs> and tacos are all different, but they all taste great. Even though you're allowed to make all these tacos, I would highly not recommend it because that's going to be way too many tacos. We don't want no tacos going to waste. <laughs> no, but in reality, if you have two variables with the same name but different capitalization, you're probably going to get confused unless there is some kind of known convention like, oh, if it starts with a lowercase letter, it means something. And if it starts with an uppercase letter, it means something else then you might be able to distinguish. But in general, I would try to just stick with one once you're starting out, and even if you're super advanced to programming, just because it can introduce confusion. If you do need to use the name twice, you might want to consider adding an underscore before it like this. Now there is kind of a more clear distinction between these two variables. Take note that the only symbol we're allowed to use is the underscore. You might get by with using other symbols such as the dollar sign or something, but the chances are it's not universal and you should just never use any other symbols besides the underscore. You can start a variable with an underscore or a letter, but you can't start a variable with a number. It's just not gonna work. Why? I don't know. Now, when it comes to what you should name your variables, you want to keep a balance on length and description. So you want it to be short in length but I guess you could say long in description, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to give you some variable names and I want you to decide, are they good variable names or are they bad variable names? The first one, amount. Yeah, I would say bad. It doesn't say what the amount is of. Amount of cookies, amount of donuts, amount of, I don't know. Amount sold, that's a little better. I would say that's probably okay. What about this? AMT sold. I personally avoid doing this because I think over time the meaning of shortened words is lost or diminished. So you'll go back and you'll have a bunch of variables like LSW and 
J, P, M, and you don't remember what any of them mean. And it makes your code harder to read. All you have to do is put three extra letters and you can put the whole word. I would say no, but you'll get some different opinions on that one. What about this one? The number of cars sold. The underscores are perfectly acceptable. Some people prefer that naming convention over using capital letters or camel casing. But I generally would say this is a bad variable name. It's too long, it's too easy to misspell. To improve this, you could just get rid of useless words. You're never going to need the, and even this number of is kind of redundant. That's because you can figure that out from the data type. If we have int cars sold, that makes just as much sense as the number of cars sold. <laughs> and it's way easier to type too. Okay, so this video might have been a little bit longer than I assumed, but I think I gave you guys a lot of useful information. I personally would try to make some variable names and try to make some incorrect variable names and see what the compiler likes and dislikes, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please click subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.